Hello and welcome to this very short video today where I'm going to take you through how I created this custom transition slide in Storyline. Um, so if you don't know who I am, my name is Emma Berry. I'm an e-learning developer and instructional designer. And I posted this transition on LinkedIn a few days ago. And a couple of, couple of you really wanted to know how I put it together. So let's close preview and get into it. So here we are in the back end of the storyline now. And you can see that this is our first slide. And if I zoom out, you'll see we've got two very large right angle triangles. And these triangles are what forms our transition. So I've got one that's kind of overlaying the slide a little bit. And this was purely a design feature. Um, I wanted this blue triangle um, to be part of the slide so that it kind of introduces the transition a little bit. So you kind of expect it to happen, if that makes sense. And we've got our um, second triangle up here. Now, the key to making this kind of smooth um, closing transition is to line the triangles up on your slide, almost like slotting two puzzle pieces together. So if I click on animations, you can see that we have two motion paths. We've got one coming from our bottom triangle and one coming from our top triangle. And if I just click on them, you will see that it they meet up nicely in the slide. So this one moves down to the center and you can, via the kind of like the motion path preview, you can see that it will take up that first section of the slide. And with this one, it's got a shorter motion path because it's already half on the slide. Um, and again, that meets in the middle. So I've just made sure those two dots line up and you can see this covers the second half of the slide. So you're essentially putting these two pieces together to make the background of the slide the dark blue or whatever color you choose. Now the trigger for all of this to happen is our nurse here. And you could use whatever you wanted um, when using this transition for your own slides. But when the learner selects our nurse Amy here, that is what tells the story, these um, triangles to start moving. So if we go over to our triggers panel on the right hand side, you can see when the user clicks Amy, this triangle moves along its line motion path and this triangle moves along its line motion path. And the third trigger we've got in here is that when these animations complete, it will automatically jump to the next slide. So as soon as these triangles have closed together, it will then jump over to the next slide. So the learner doesn't have to select anything. It does it automatically. Key thing to note here with these slides is make sure you set them as reset to initial state. Uh, just because when the learner revisits this, if we've got a trigger like this and it's set to resume, for example, Storyline may want to keep jumping to this next slide um, and that could cause like an endless loop. So make sure that it's reset to initial state. OK, so there's our first slide set up. So simple, takes seconds. So let's jump into our second slide, which is where this one is transitioning to. So again, you can see we've got a couple of motion paths going on here, which we will explore in a minute. But the first thing to note is our nurse and our icon here. Now these are kept in exactly the same position. So what I did was just um, copy them over. You could also duplicate the slide um, just to guarantee that they are in the exact same spot. Um, and you can also check up on your size and position here that the, your X and Y coordinates are the same as the previous slide. I also made sure there was no animations on these, um, no entrance ones, sorry so that when these slides jump to the next, you're not having these um, this character and this icon suddenly fading back in. Uh, so it looks incredibly seamless. It looks like they've not moved at all. It's just the background that's moved. So if I pull up my timeline, we can see that we have our text box and the rectangle that it sits above. Um, and if we look on our timeline, you can see that these animate in um, all before a second of the time of the uh, slide starting. So we've got a little cue point here as well. So once everything that I've wanted to add on this slide has animated in, our timeline then pauses. So if we go over to our triggers again, we've got when the timeline reaches cue point one, the, it pauses the timeline on the slide. So what this does is stop these exit animations from going. 
because if we left it, the timeline would carry on running and these would then exit again within like a second, which we don't want. We want the learner chance uh, to be able to read this text. So that trigger just pauses our timeline here just before any of these exit animations happen. Now for this next transition, what I want is this blue background to disappear, this dark navy, and I want this icon to become the focus of our next slide, which is this one here and where we've got the markers. So what we need to do is move this icon into that spot and get rid of the background. So if I click here, you'll notice that the blue background is actually our triangles. So these are the same triangles that we used um, on the previous slide, except they are now sort of motionless um, together as our background. And you're essentially just reversing what you've done on the previous slide. So if I click on these motion paths here, you can see that instead of the triangle coming into the slide, this time we want it to go out the slide. With our icon here, we want it to move across and I'm having it sitting central in the slide. You could have it sit wherever you want it to um, based on what your slide is about. Um, so that is just moving a very short motion path to the center of the slide. So what makes this all happen? So obviously we've got our slide paused at the moment. So my next trigger to make this transition begin is this care icon. So I've added an emphasis animation of pulse so that when the learner hovers over it, they know that it's a clickable, um, a clickable function. So when the learner then clicks this care icon, this tells the slide to move this triangle off the screen to move our other triangle off the screen. Um, and it also tells the slide to resume the timeline as well. So we've got this triangle moving, this triangle moving, our care icon begins to move as well. And it resumes the timeline that allows the text boxes and our nurse Amy to fade off the screen. I think I said it's a fade, yeah. So they fade out. So all of this then happens at the same time, um, which creates that kind of fluid, smooth um, transition. So again, once this ends, so instead of the uh, timeline or jumping to the next slide, sorry, when an animation is completed, instead this time we do it when the timeline ends on this slide. So I've allowed enough time on this timeline so that all these animations can complete properly. And once this timeline ends, that is when it will again automatically jump over to our next slide. And as with before, make sure you set um, your slide as reset to initial state. And then we move on to our final slide. And this is probably the most simple one because um, it has no animations really apart from some entrance animations. So we've got our um, icon here. And the trickiest bit about this is lining this icon up so that it um, matches where this one meets. And the way I did this was just copy over the icon with the motion path, find out where the motion path ends and just line it up. So we have our markers then animate in and our text box telling the learner what to do and this lovely image here as well. So this doesn't animate, this is static now um, on this slide because in theory, it's already done its entrance animation on our previous slide. And there we go. It's so simple. It's all done within Storyline. There's no extra video. There's no um, sort of adding in any other JavaScript or coding or anything like that. So, so simple to do. And you could replace these triangles with whatever you want. You could do circles. You could do fancy shapes. Um, if you want a bit of a challenge of lining them up, you could do different colors and have, um, you know, a kind of color wipe transition. Literally do whatever suits your slide. Um, so let's just preview this again and see it all come together. So we've got our first slide here with Nurse Amy and we select Amy and that triggers the transition. And we're now onto our second slide, which you can see on the menu here. We select our care icon, that moves, everything fades out and we are now on our third slide. Really simple and I love to see what everybody else comes up with using this similar transition.